What's up, my stat stars? Let's talk about a two-sample z-test for the difference between two population proportions. So we have population proportion one, population proportion two. Maybe this is the proportion of men that have a college degree, and this is the proportion of women that have a college degree. So we're analyzing the categorical variable, do you have a college degree? And we want to see if there's a difference between the proportion of men that have a college degree and the proportion of women that have a college degree. So anytime we look at two things, we naturally care about the difference. Is there a difference? If there's no difference, then they're the same, and we're going to get a difference of zero. But if the proportion of men is bigger, then we're going to get a positive number. If the proportion of women is bigger, we're going to get a negative number if we do it in this order. So the whole idea is that we're trying to determine, is there evidence, statistically significant evidence, to suggest that there is, in fact, a difference between these two population proportions. Now, one way we can answer this question is to ask every single man, ask every single woman, and then we could actually get the true population proportions, but that's way out of the question. But what we can do is we can get a sample from population one, we can get a sample proportion from population two, and we can analyze the difference between our two sample proportions. Now, we know one thing for sure, and that that's that samples vary. So just because we see a difference in our sample proportions doesn't mean that there is, in fact, a difference in the population proportions. That's the whole reason why we have to conduct a test. So that's the idea of what we have to do. Now, a test has three, excuse me, four pretty simple steps. Some people will say three. It all depends what you include in your steps. But essentially, step one is we have to define the parameter of interest and name the test and give our hypotheses. Step two is to check those pesky conditions to make sure we're allowed to conduct the test. Step three is to get our Z-score, known as the test statistic, and our P-value. And then in step four, we're going to use that P-value to draw a conclusion for, well, the whole problem, you know, is there evidence or is there a lack of evidence? Let's start looking at an example in our next video. So stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to do a full example.